Even if you know your way around the shape tools in Photoshop, I'm willing to bet that there are some underappreciated settings that will completely change the way you use these tools. So let's break down what they are and how you can use them to have more fun with your shape tools in Photoshop. Now, since we're talking about the five keys to improve your shape tool usage in Photoshop, I'm going to create a brand new key shape from scratch using the preset shape tools that are already available inside of Photoshop. Now, obviously there is no key shape, so we're gonna create one using a circle, a rectangle, and a triangle. That way we can create something while also learning what all of these different settings will offer us. So to begin, I'll create a new circle with the ellipse tool. I'll click and drag out, hold the shift key to create a perfect circle, hold the space bar to move that into place, and resize that as needed. Now we have one shape on its own layer right here. Now I wanna add the other components of my key. I'll go ahead and add a rectangle, and then I'll add a triangle. Rotating this triangle into position with the move tool, I can now just position this into place and warp it or scale it to fit along the edge of that triangle. Now, since I'm trying to create one shape with three different types of shape tools, each shape that I created was put on its own layer here. That means that if I wanted to edit the look of this key, I would need to edit three different shapes individually with the same settings, which kind of sucks. So we want to go and make this all one single shape by merging all of our related shape layers. By holding Command or Control, I can click between all of my shape layers, and this is the first key to working with shapes in Photoshop. When you have a bunch of related shapes that you want to be able to edit together, you can always merge them to combine all of those shape settings into one single layer. So with all of these layers highlighted, I'll press Command or Control E to merge them onto one single layer, and it still will maintain its shape tool properties. But now I can go and edit the fill color, for example, and it will change the color of every single shape that I created, even though I used three different shape tools. Again, this is because I merged those shapes. I'll reset this color back to white. Now this brings us into the second key with using shape tools in Photoshop, and that is using other shape tools to subtract from an existing shape rather than using a layer mask. The reason for this is so that you can always edit your path afterwards and you'll get the correct stroke settings as well as your layer styles will look the way you hope they do. So in this case, I want to create two little key slots here that are gonna be rectangles or squares. So I can just go ahead and use the rectangle shape tool right here. But of course, if I go and click and drag out like so, I'll just create a new shape and a shape layer. So to use this shape to subtract from another shape, I'll press Command or Control Z to undo this. Up in the options bar, while our shape tool is active, we can go and choose the subtract front shapes option. Now, when I go and click and drag out while the rectangle tool is active here and the shape layer that I want to edit is active in my layers panel, when I let go, it's going to use that shape to subtract from my highlighted shape layer. I'll now go ahead and repeat this process once again still with the subtract front shape setting enabled in the options bar, I'll go and create a second key slot like so and let go to subtract from this shape. Now we have used two different shape layers to refine the look of an existing shape and we're able to use a path rather than a mask to do this selection. So we often will get a little bit more of a sharper edge and we can scale this infinitely. Now at this point, we have five separate shapes that are creating our shape layer, which limits how we can refine some of the connecting pieces between our different shapes. For example, we have the circle, rectangle, triangle, and then the two subtracting squares. But if I wanted to go and edit the roundness values of say this joint here or this joint here, it would not be possible because they are technically separate paths. So instead, what we can do is merge all of these paths into one so we have a more easily editable shape layer. After we have created our desired shape and everything is in the order that we would like, we can go ahead and merge all of these into a single path by going up to the shape tool settings within the options bar while any of your shape tools are active, and we'll go to merge shape components. We'll click yes, 
And now you'll notice that the path will only go around the outer edge of the shape that we have created, which brings us into the fourth key of using the shape tools in Photoshop, which is that it allows us now to use the pen tool to refine the look of our shape. For example, I'll grab the pen tool by pressing P on my keyboard and hold command or control and click on my path to activate all of the anchor points. Let's say that I want this key to be a little bit more bubbly, so I want to round some of the corners around the key slots here and the front of the key as well. So to do that, I can just go and hold Alt or Option and click on an anchor point and just drag out like so to round that path. I'll repeat this process holding Alt or Option and dragging to just round that path and make this look slightly more bubbly, I suppose. But this is only possible because we have combined everything into a single path so we can refine these anchor points as we would like and get a completely different look for our key. You would not be able to edit the joints of your shape in this way without merging all of your shape components. But in this case, we have been able to use the pen tool to distort some of these edges and make things look a bit more bubbly and interesting in a way that we wouldn't be able to do previously with any of our default shape tool settings. Now within this process, all of your pen tool settings still apply. So if you are familiar with the pen tool, go ahead and use all of those shortcuts for rounding edges, removing anchor points, moving paths and all that kind of thing. But since that's outside of the scope of this lesson, if you want to learn more about the pen tool and all of its operations, you can check out this video here to learn more. But now this brings us into the fifth and final key, which is using additional shapes to subtract from your current shape, but without merging them. And I'll show you why. In this case, I want to add a keyhole as well as a line along the bottom of the key. To begin with the rectangle tool enabled, I want to subtract from my current shape. Rather than going and setting the subtract front shape option up here, I can just hold Alt or Option while any shape tool is active. Clicking on that shape layer, I'll hold Alt or Option and click and drag out to create a shape. Hold the spacebar to move this over and I'll scale this out. Letting go, this will now subtract from that shape with a new path separate from the other path surrounding the outer edges of our shape. I'll redo this process with the ellipse tool, holding Alt or Option once again to subtract and removing a keyhole. Now we have two separate subtracted paths from our shape, which are editable separate from the outer contents of our shape. So for example, I would love to round the corners of this little line at the bottom of our key. So if I hold command or control and click on that path, I can now zoom in and just use the round edges feature, which is available because this is a separate path, drag inwards. And now that has rounded that shape and given our design a little bit of a different look. Clicking on the shape layer, we can now see all of the different paths involved in creating this shape. And although we used a variety of different shapes and shape modes, we are able to create a single shape layer that is easily editable. And by adding these additional shapes to subtract from the active shape later on in the process, we can update all of those roundness values with a lot more ease. But with all of this complete, we can of course use our general shape tool settings to update the stroke of the shape, for example, adding an outline to all of the paths in the shape. We can change the fill color as you would likely expect. And of course, we could now save this as a custom shape preset to use in future images just by going up here to edit and down here to define a custom shape. So I hope that these five keys have opened up your eyes to new ways that you can use the shape tools in Photoshop. But if you're still unfamiliar with shapes as a whole, be sure to check out my complete shape tool lesson here where you can learn all the essentials of shape creation. Just click the video right here here to watch that now and I hope to see you there.